What's up everyone, Bando here with another video of mine, and today we are going to be programming the KK2 for our uh, FT Explorer VTOL build. So the first thing is you're going to need this um, flashing tool, to U a USASP flashing tool to um, make sure the KK2, I mean to flash the KK2 with custom software that allows us to do VTOL stuff. So switching over to the other camera, I will show you guys how to connect this properly. Alrighty, so we are on the other camera over here. So you got your KK2 right over here. And the top pin over here, the top left pin is what the ground is. Right there, so you see ground, and you basically just plug it in to the other ground on the KK2. Plug that in and everything's plugged in properly. And to test that, if nothing explodes when you plug it into your computer and the light is on, it turns on. Perfect, you did everything right if you get that. If you don't, then uh, you might have connected something wrong, but that's basically how everything plugs in, all right? That being said, let's go ahead and move on to the next step where we are going to be, um, we're gonna actually be flashing it. So to do that, um, we're gonna switch over to my uh, computer over here. Okay, we are now on my computer right now, and what you wanna do is go and type in KK Multicoupler Flash Tool Download the AMG. And then you'll find this lasertoys.de. And scroll down. So this is the supported, the supported boards, the KK2 is included right there. And you scroll down and then you'll see downloads, and then you wanna download which one you need. So, so once you got that, then you can go ahead and head over. I already have my application over here. You can open that up. Okay, so we got the KK2 multi-copter flash tool right here. And what you want to do is, yeah, that everything else is selected properly. Make sure you have the right uh, controller you have. And then you want to go here, flashing from our repository, and then go to file. Now, file, we actually need a file sorry we need the open arrow VTOL firmware to download on this KK2 right here so to do that all we have to do is uh, go to open arrow VTOL right there go to RC groups scroll down the new latest release is version 1.5 if there's a new one out there um, after this video comes out then go ahead and download that the latest version then go here you got the VTOL and then the docs. I, th I believe the docs is just the manual and stuff, which I highly recommend you go check that out. But for now, we are just going to download the firmware and then open that. And then you have the KK2 mini uh, mini hex and then the KK2 KK2 one. So if you have the mini KK2, then you can click that one. But if you have the big one like what I have right here, um, then you want to use the this file so you can just go here oh look it already knows where to find it and then you just go open load firmware from file and then you want to press this button which flash the selected firmware from your computer then you got all this information going down and it's writing it right now live so just let that flash as you can see the board is blank you want to keep it this way until it's done flashing so this is a pretty long process but um yeah do not unplug it or else i don't know bad stuff will happen and bad stuff is not good so we'll just wait for that to load it says flash flashing firmware was successful and then you get this screen right here and it says our press for status battery low and that means everything is good you can go ahead and plug it Nothing bad will happen, really. Ooh, unplugged. I just want to show you guys a cool feature. I mean, a feature that is you need to know about, and that's, um, let's focus you. As you can see here, there's this jumper pin right here. And that one, it says 5 volts and 3.3 volts. You need to change that to 5 volts, so, um, because 3.3 is not enough. That's not how this data is transferred from the KK2. Um, so I'm just going to plug this back in so I can power it again. So I just plug it in. So we're basically done with the flashing portion of the KK2. Um, after that, after that, all 
what we have to do is actually program that. Now to program it, let's exit this out. And go to Google Chrome. You wanna go to the Dropbox that Randy St. Clair has of all the VTOL settings. So you can just go like VTOL Explorer. Find that. Dropbox. And you'll see here the build instructions. And you wanna go here to the program template where you'll see all the settings. And the, you wanna to go to Very Easy or Easy. So Very Easy basically has like auto leveling, which I will show you guys how to do because that's like the most recommended unless you already know how to fly VTOLs. Then you maybe you wanna to go to Easy, but even if you're experienced, you still, you should start with Very Easy. So we basically have to transfer all these settings onto the KK2. So yes, it is a long process, but whatever. So that being said, let's go in and start. So the orientation is this is the first setting So to get into those modes all you have to do is uh, press any button and then press the button closest to menu Which is that Press and then you'll see all this all the um, Menu tabs that will be matched up with the, the ones on the computer over here Okay, so now we got the settings here. Over here it says orientation top front. What does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and press the most right button. Oh my gosh. I forgot one very important step, and that is unplug and you want to change the settings. I mean, you want to reset the settings. So to do that, unplug it again and hold the two buttons on the outside, these two buttons right here and plug it in so hold it down as you're plugging in and oh that's ESC calibrate sorry one you want to hold the two middle ones right here and plug it in and I'll say reset and then yeah that's done it's resetted that's like if you have any bad settings there or previous settings you should want to reset that so everything's good and then go back to the setting go to general and then orientation needs to be top front instead of top rear. So you just got to go through all the settings. Oop, top front right there. And then go down, tail sitter, no. Contrast, 360, safety, armable. If you have the setup that I have, the, actually the Emacs ESCs that come with the flight test power packs need to be up to orange because for some reason it, it can't really communicate very well with the KK2. So just have this as armed instead. If you use the flight test power pack, if you're using any other ESC, um, then arm, arm a bull should work, and then you can arm it via that. And then disarm time, 30, low voltage alarm off. You can have this on to whatever you want, 3.5, I guess. Um, I really don't know. That doesn't really matter. But basically what happens is that it'll beep when the voltage gets through the threshold. And then go down. All these settings should be fine. Just double check, making sure everything is good. Preset and A are options. That's options is like the default because there's no preset for this guy. And then buzzer on. Okay, next step or next side is receiver setup. So go down an S bus if you're using an S bus one or PDO, PWN or PPM whatever um, ESC you're work um whatever sorry receiver you're working on. You should change that to uh, whatever pro. Whatever communication protocol you are using. And then, yeah, all these settings should be fine. Gear, yeah, that should be fine. Channel order, if mine is set to like some spectrum, which is T A E R. Throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. But basically, you can go here and whatever is your setup, then you wanna. And then, profile channel, channel can be set to gear. And I'll show you guys what you have to do. I have a Tyrannus, but I'll show you guys what you have to do on um, the transmitter setup. But this is just for the KK2. We'll set the uh, transmitter uh, later. Output transition needs to set to 8. Sorry, that's 8. Oh my gosh. 8. And inbound needs to be set to 2. Transition low is 0. Transition mid needs to be set to 20. And as I do this, you guys should be following as well. Save. So 20. 
transition high is set to uh, 100. Uh, vibration display is zero. And accelerometer, verge, or whatever filter thing which you should, set, should be set to 20. Exit out of that menu. And we'll be scrolling down to the other, um, what do you call it, pages that we have here. And then we're set to um, level meter, flight profiles, whatever that is. So um, we'll go over the receiver inputs and stick polarity when we connect them, um, when we connect this to the receiver, but we haven't done that yet. Sensor calibration, we'll do that later. Level meter, we'll do that later. Flight, pro flight profile one. So for flight, for roll P, flight profile one so should be set to 80. So you just gotta scroll all the way up to 80. Roll I needs to be set to zero, so you can just go default. No, that won't work actually. Set to zero. Roll I limit needs to be set to zero. Roll I rate needs to be set to zero. And roll auto level needs to be set to 20. Let's actually center this field up. Okay, and then you can just scroll down there, and then you have the roll trim. Roll trim needs to be set to zero, and then pitch P uh, needs to be set to 80. Eighty, and then pitch I needs to be set to zero. A very tedious process, I know, but it's necessary. Pitch I limit. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry, pitch. Uh, shoot, I did not read it. Pitch I needs to be set to five. Okay, guys, five. Pitch I limit needs to be set to three. Pitch auto level. That's three. Pitch I limit is three. Yeah, so this five, three, three, and then pitch auto level needs to be set to 20. Make sure you, I double check my settings because I might screw it up on accident. Okay, that's good. Okay, pitch trim, it needs to be set to eight. And what that will do is that it will like have it pitched up a little because it is a heavy machine, the VTOL is a heavy machine and you need it a little up elevator to keep that, um, to keep it level. And then yaw P needs to be set to 60. Oh, it already is at 60. Yaw I needs to be set to zero. Yeah, I limit needs to be set to zero. Yeah, I rate needs to be set to zero. And your trim is zero. And then Z axis P needs to be set to 40. And then Z axis I needs to be set to 20. And Z axis I limit needs to be set to 10. And that's for flight profile one, and then you have to do flight profile number two. And roll P will be set to 10. Roll I needs to be set to zero. Roll I limit needs to be set to zero again. Roll I rate needs to be set to zero. Uh, roll auto level needs to be set to 25. Roll trim needs to be set to zero. Roll pitch P needs to be set to 20. And then pitch I needs to be set to zero. Pitch I limit needs to be set to zero. Pitch I rate needs to be set to zero. And pitch auto level needs to be set to 20. Pitch I Pitch trim needs to be set to zero. Oh, sorry. Oh, shoot. Um, yaw P needs to be set to 10. And basically, flight profile one is the hover mode, and then flight profile number two is uh, forward flight. 10, and then 
Everything after that needs to be set to zero. So all these settings are like yaw I, um, yaw I limit needs to be set to zero. Just go down, make sure everything is set to zero. Like so. Done. Whew. Okay, now it's checking curve time. So scroll down. This is where I screwed up my settings. So don't do what I did, okay? Anyways, go here. You want to make sure you check every single curve because if you don't, you something might be screwed up. That looks about right to how this looks on the diagram on the um, spreadsheet over here. And just look at all the spreadsheets. Okay, now let's go back. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. C curve, that looks good. D curve, that looks good. Everything is actually good. Oh, I'm sorry, I screwed up on the offsets, my bad. So you want to be able to check that everything is perfect. So everything's set to zero for these, for out one to four. And then out five will be set to zero as well. Out six needs to be set, add an offset of six. So just scroll that up. Oops, I skipped one on accident. Now everything is at an offset at six. For out six, and then out seven. It needs to be an offset of negative 24. So all this uh, offset, I mean, out 7 is set to 24, negative 24. And then out 8 needs to be set to 0. Oh, everything is screwed up. I know. That's exactly what I did wrong. So to do that, you just have to scroll that all the way up. So it's set to 0. Let's go down the list. Everything needs to be set to zero. If not, your ailerons will be all screwed up, just like how I screwed up uh, my VTOL up. Or the first one I made, at least. Alright. I don't know why the settings are like this, but it is like that. Boom, now everything is set to zero. We are now done with the offsets. Now time for out one mixer. So out one will be a motor. So device motor, perfect. Throttle volume for P1 is set to 100. Throttle volume for number two needs to be set to zero. Because we don't need the hover motors to be on when we're flying forward flight. Transition curve needs to be set to square root sign. And then P1 aileron volume is set to 15. We actually need that to be at 20. And then this needs to be set to zero. You can press define, by the way. I mean, default and sets everything to zero. It's pretty cool. And then P1 elevator volume needs to be set to negative 20. Then P2 elevator volume needs to be set to default or zero. And then P1 rudder volume is set to 40. We need that to be set to 30 positive 30 so let's move that up boom and then p2 rudder volume needs to be set to uh 
zero. Now this needs to be on, roll gyro needs to be on, and then P2 roll gyro needs to be set to off, and basically this interchanges. So this is on, this is off. So if everything for P2 needs to be off. Oh, what the heck just happened? Okay, sorry. P2 roll, I mean, um, sorry. Auto level needs to be set to off. And you can double check, it just alternates on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And if you have that, then yeah, you did everything right. And then P1 source A set to none, that needs to be set to accelerometer X. There you go. And then P1, I mean P, uh, P1 volume needs to be set to negative 20. Oops. And then this one here, instead of none, it needs to be set to accelerometer X and set to negative 20 as well. And then once you got that, scroll down, all of this should set to none. And then when you have that, you can just scroll up, making sure all your settings are correct. All right, that looks about right. Yeah, that looks good. Perfect. Woo! All right. And basically you have to do that for all the settings all the way down to out. What is it? Eight. Long process. I know. Tell me something new. Okay, I've done this so many darn times. It's kind of annoying. All right, this is good. P2 throttle volume needs to be set to zero. This needs to be set to square root sign. This needs to be set to negative 20. And all the settings are different, so make sure you check on the spreadsheet. Or the, yeah, and I'll send a link. I'll put a link in the description below if you guys can't find it online. If I remind to do that when af when I'm editing or after I'm editing, and then rotor volume set of forty and needs to be set to negative three. I'm sorry, negative thirty. Negative thirty. P two rotor volume is zero. Zero. And then this thing, just like always, is going to have to alternate. So if it's P2 roll gyro, that's gonna be off. Sorry, that, oh shoot. This one is on. P2 is off. All right, P1 source A needs to be set to accelerometer X just like always, and then P1 volume needs to be set to 20, positive 20. Oof, okay, P2 source A needs to be set to accelerometer X. And then P2 volume needs to be set to 20. Oh, sorry. And then go ahead and go up again and just double check all your settings. Make sure everything is correct. Alright. Ooh, my hand hurts already. That looks about right. And then go to out three mixer. This needs to be set to zero. And then transition curve needs to be set to screw it sign. This needs to be set to negative 20. P1 aileron volume. P2 aileron volume needs to be set to zero. P1 elevator volume needs to be set to two, I mean 20, positive. And then P2 elevator volume needs to be set to zero. And then P1 uh, rudder volume needs to be set to positive 30. P2 rotor volume set to zero, and then this needs to alternate as well. Oh, 
All right, source A, P1 source A needs to be set to accelerometer to X. And then the volume needs to be set to negative 20. And then negative, I mean, sorry, accelerometer X. And negative 20. Double check. Okay. Finally, on the last of uh, the hover motors, this, as usual, not the new, needs to be set to zero. Transition curve needs to be set to a uh, squared sign. Aileron needs to be set to 20. This needs to be set to zero. Uh, P1 elevator needs to be set to uh, 20. Uh, P2 elevator needs to be set to zero. P1 rudder volume needs to be set to negative 30. And rudder will be yaw movement. FYI, knowledge. Negative 30 and then that, and then P2 rudder volume needs to be set to zero. And then P1 roll gyro on and as always, this alternates on off, on off. Um, all the P2s, all the, oh shoot. All the P2 gyros need to be set to off. Oh, so P1 source A needs to be set to accelerometer X as usual. Uh, scroll down, this needs to be set to positive 20. This needs to be set to accelerometer X. And this needs to be set to positive 20. Boom. Oh, let's double check that as usual. That's good. That's good. Everything is good. Good, 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 good. Okay, now I can move on to the thrust. The forward flight thrust motor needs to be set to a motor. Uh, this needs to be set, uh, P2 throttle volume needs to be set to 100. Default will make it to go 100, FYI. This needs to be set to square root sign. And all the values over here need to be set to zero. So if you see a number there, set it to zero. All right, and then for this one, um, for the uh, gyros, you can set that all to off. And all of this is at set to none. So that being said, just double check everything is off. There's nothing really controls the throttle. I mean the thrust motor except for the throttle. So you don't need any gyros to affect that. Out six is going to be the rudder. So that needs to be a servo, which it is. Everything is set. This needs to zero, zero, linear. Um, this needs to be set to zero. All of this is, needs to be set to zero and except for the rudder values. So P1 rudder volume needs to be set to 60. And then P2 rudder volume also needs to be set to 60. And then this everything should be off it is p1 aileron oh shoot uh, source a needs to actually be set to accelerometer x and then p1 volume needs to be set to negative 10 and then source x i meant accelerometer x for source a um p2 or profile 2 for fancy um this needs to be set to negative 10 and all these settings are good so just double checking, the rudder values are 60, everything is zero, linear, and it's a servo. Okay, now move on to the elevator, which is out six. This is all good, zero, 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 linear. And then this needs to be set to zero, zero, sorry. And then P1 elevator, because this is elevator, we need 70% uh, or 70 elevator for the volume. 
which it's set now, and as well as for P2. These rudder values need to be set to zero though. And then all this should be set to off. And then P1 source A can be set to a throttle. And set to negative 10. So that means when you give it throttle, this needs to be throttle as well. When you give it throttle, the elevator is actually going to move so it goes up more. That's a trainer feature, FYI. Negative 10. So negative because it goes to, you push down in order for it to go up. Oh shoot, I forgot. You're actually going to need for P1 pitch aileron. And P2 pitch aileron, you need that to be turned on. So for pitch ail sorry, pitch ele um sorry. For pitch auto level, you're gonna need that to be on. Oh shoot, I completely read this wrong. You're gonna need that for rudder as well, but on the yaw side. Um You're gonna need that for the P1 pitch gyro as well. So P2 and P1 needs to be set to on. Okay, let's double check that, making sure we didn't screw anything up like we I always do. Okay, so wait. Oops. That's right. On for those, for the pitches, and on for the pitches for gyros. 70, that is correct. Okay, let's go ahead and change out six. Sorry guys. Um you need to set that for P1 yaw gyro. That needs to be set to on. And P2. Okay. And finally we're at ooh, 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 ooh. On the ailerons, we're just out eight. Finally, this is so long, my arm is actually hurting. Um, linear, yep, this needs to be set to zero. I mean, sorry, 100, my bad. All the way up. P2 aileron volume needs to be set to 100 as well. So this is set to 100, 100, 0, 0, and 0 all the way down. And then um, the roll gyros need to be on. So on for that again. As well as roll auto level. Now roll auto level is on. You need, uh, that's it actually. Yeah, so I think we're actually done programming the KK2 for now. As you can see, there's other settings here, but we'll deal with those later. What's next would probably, uh, what is next actually, as a statement, we need to, um, plug that into our actual VTOL and plug in the certain cables. And I'll show you guys how to do that. Alrighty, so we are back on the bench. As you can see, we got the KK2 board right here. And let's switch over to the other camera. And um, <clears throat> I have all the wires nice and kneaded up with all the markings, the correct markings on it. Again, you, I already went over this in the build video, but you can also look at that on the, the PDF slash like manual. Oh, one quick thing that I did add, if I can... Uh, Take this camera off. I added some. I added those. This darn autofocus is terrible. Manual focus that. So I added those things, whatever you want to call it. These supports here. It's just three fourths inch of uh, 
foam and I just stacked it. And what that allows is it allows, it prevents the wing from like wiggling around and that ensures that it's always uh, centered. Anyways, that being said, we can now connect everything to the KKT board right here. So the first step, I guess, is to connect the SBUS cable. So you have the signal right here and then five volts and then the subtraction or I mean, sorry, negative or ground. So you just wanna line it up like that. Remember yellow or orange is always the signal. So that's done, you know, I wanna do it on the third one. And then, yeah, that's the easiest step because after that, or the hardest step because after that, you just have to <clears throat> plug everything in. So everything's labeled, so this is number one. That will plug into the number one slot here. Like so, make sure everything's lined up so signal is all the way in the center. Like that. Number two. Plugged in. Number three. Plugged in. Four. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. Boom, so now we got everything plugged in. You can sort of just take another of these JST connectors you have here and simply plug it into the battery. Make sure it's polarized properly. So you have a, uh, oops, you have a plus and minus and you just wanna plug that in. And you also have a buzzer, which you can plug in as well. It won't, whoop. oh, it actually will plug in on the side. Um, you can connect that together, lining up positive and negatives. There we go. So the buzzer's plugged in. And then you can just stuff the wires in. And then put the Velcro. Actually, I'm gonna feed the buzzer on the back side so it's neat with the others. Now the buzzer's quite annoying, so that's why I don't like programming it programming with it because there's a lot of beeps but it is a good feature when you're done programming it and you need it for flying as a just if there's any warnings that it needs to tell you or alarm you about and once that's done just stuff it in there you go so now it looks nice and neat right there see cool project um, now you need a battery. I'm just gonna take this spare battery right here. Um, three cell, it really doesn't matter what kind of battery you're using. You just need a battery. Plugging that in, giving it life. See, it gives you that loud noise and it's so annoying, right? So, yeah, oh, shut up, thank you. Uh, I forgot to center my servos on my aileron, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Alrighty, so now this is what you will see. Um, yeah, that being said, you can uh, go to sensor calibration and oops, this thing's in the way. you want to calibrate it and don't touch it. And now it's calibrated. You want to make sure it's level. Oh shoot, the, the table's not even level. So let me put this on the ground and do it. Okay, so I calibrated it on the ground. And then you also wanna do, oops, can you see this? And then it also says inverted here. You wanna do an inverted um, calibration as well. So you just to flip the board around and then calibrate that. I'll do that later, but you just wanna flip the plane and just wants to see. It doesn't have to be perfectly inverted, but it just wants to see how it, um, the sensor when it looks uh, upside down. The level meter shows you how level it is, so. So basically, oh wait, after sensor calibration, basically all these numbers should be near or around zero, except for uh, the yaw accelerometer, because that's, you can't really get that perfect. But stick polarity and receiver inputs, we need to do that. So before we need to get our transmitter. So like I said before, I do use the Tyrannus. So that's what I use, guys. 
Let's actually take move this off so I can show move the VTOL off so you guys so I can show you guys what you need to do in your transmitter. Okay. So this is my transmitter FYI. Um set to an arrow. Let's go to my VTOL. Just create a new one. A new model, really. This might not be the same for yours. Make sure it's binded as well. Um, but what you need to set up is a mixer or in the whatever aux ports you have and you just need to have one switch. It can be channel 5 or channel 6. Channel 5 will be the gear on um, or the gear channel on the KK2 and the channel 6 will be the aux 1 or auxiliary 1. So I just have it on this switch right here as my modes. So like this is going to be like hover. This is going to be like um, forward flight and this will be uh, I mean, this will be like the mid, uh, like the hover slash forward flight, and this will be forward flight. Um, I don't know why I don't have that set up. Usually I have special functions, like this will tell you some telemetry. Um, I won't show you guys how to do that because there's plenty of other videos on how to do that, um, on YouTube, but I like to have it say telemetry because I do have that, um, extra telemetry smart port thing that allows me to get live voltage so yeah that's it you all all you really need is one extra channel so like a five channel radio is perfect but something that is programmable like a tyrannus or a dx i don't know 12 i don't know how spectrum works but yeah that's what you need and yeah let me bring back the vtol all right i have the vtol back um receiver inputs as you can see, we have our settings right there. Mm -mm -mm. Um, and it's already bound to our transmitter right now. So you can just hit the calibrate button, make sure all the switches are set to uh, their normal positions and the throttle is all the way down and the sticks are in the middle. I just press calibrate and then now all of it should uh, center up in, uh, to zero or round. Okay, so now we have that calibrated and like all the positions move like properly. Oh wait, we, we need to do stick polarity and just hold the sticks as shown with your actual transmitter and that's done. Um, receiver inputs, we actually have to set our, um, our receiver endpoints so they end at about 1,000, 1,000 to well, yeah, one th plus or minus 1,000. So like as I'm seeing this aileron, it's going too far. Oh! Whoops, the gear actually needs to be centered in the center position, like that, and then it should go to like 124, or 1024, and end, end at 1024, as you can see, it's not so. So we're gonna have to change that in the settings, um, depending on how your transmitter's set up, that's how you're gonna have to do it. All right, perfect, so like, st yeah, over there, 1025 and 1025. 1024 is the closest you want, but if that's as close as it gets, then it's fine. And throttle needs to be adjusted, so it goes to 2000, so you're gonna have to adjust a lot of the endpoints on that so it ends properly. I'm not gonna show that in this. I'm just gonna skip that portion for, for the video just so you guys can accelerate the process to what you guys really are here to see. But that's what you want to do. Oh wait, I actually forgot to do something. Um, you need to do an EAC calibrate, so you, um, what you have to do for that is you need to hold these two buttons down, the two outermost buttons, these down, as you power up the, uh, the battery. So let's go ahead and do that, and this is with no, um, you don't need to have an RC link or anything, like, you don't need your transmitter on, or radio control, whatever you want to call it. So, how am I gonna do this? It's gonna be a little hard to do. Two buttons down. Plug it in. Let go. Now it's calibrated. So you can just plug it back in. And you see everything is should be working properly. And all the motors are spinning. And basically, that's pretty much it. We're kind of done programming. All I need to do is... um make sure your servos are uh, properly moving and if that if they're not then you can simply just reverse them by scrolling down and go servo direction and then just setting that to like re reverse or something like that 
but yeah, we're done with, um, yeah, we're finally done with the programming portion of the video. So, and in general, building the whole thing, all you have to do is put the rubber bands on and we're done. So, yeah, I'm probably gonna make a maiden video on it and show you guys how it flies. And yeah, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully it's um, a lot, filled with a lot of great information and hopefully I can help you guys. So if you have any questions or comments, put it in the comment section below. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and peace out.